Well, hello, welcome everyone. It's great to see you all here. What an awesome crowd we have today. I think a lot of interest in today's subject, so I'm not gonna take too long up here. Um, my name's TJ, I'm the program coordinator here at the library. Uh, it's great to see everyone, like I said, and I do wanna remind everyone um, that these are your programs, this is your library. So if you have ideas, uh, if you know someone that you think would um, you know, be part of a program here that could be really great, uh, don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, you can send an email to programming at ranchomiragelibrary.org. Uh, also, a quick reminder that if you've got your cell phone with you, make sure you turn that off or silence it now, please. Uh, I also want to take just a minute to recognize one of our elected officials in the audience today. Please help me recognize uh, Council Member Ted Weil. And I wanted to remind everyone that we do have lots of great programs coming out. Make sure you grab one of our uh, program guides in the back of the room if you don't have one. Uh, also, make sure you sign up for our email list. We send out email reminders for all of our programs as well. Tomorrow, we have the Coachella Valley Classical Voices group. Uh, they're going to do a mix of opera and Broadway tunes, and they're extremely talented. We had, uh, they were referred to as Met to Broadway last year, um, and they've grown since then, and that was a great show, and I know they're really excited to be back this year. So that program will take place tomorrow at 7 p.m. The doors will open at 6 p.m. And then I wanted to remind everyone that next week uh, on Tuesday at 2 p.m., we will have the second in our Osher Lifelong Learning Series uh, lectures uh, when we welcome uh, Carrie Berman, who is an expert locally, and he's going to be talking about the Enchanted Valley, exploring our valley's treasure, so all the really amazing hidden gems that we have right here in the Coachella Valley, so that should be a great talk as well. This is the first time that we have partnered with the uh, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, and it's been really great. We're super excited uh, for these two talks, and I know they do a lot of great programming. Quick question, just because I'm curious, is there anyone, this is your first time at Rancho Mirage Library? Wow, yeah, well, welcome. We're, we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, and if there's some of you that come to our library programs that uh, don't know too much about what Ollie does, make sure that you check out what they do. So in the back of the room, um, there's some information. Uh, and one of the representatives, you can actually uh, ask questions, uh, find out more. So I encourage you to do that on your way out. But with that, let's get started with today's program. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our today's presenter, uh, Michael Casadante. He is the Director of Digital Transformation at California State University, San Bernardino. Please help me welcome Michael. <laughs> Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, this is really quite a turnout. I am, uh, I'm nervous now. And I used to be an elementary school teacher, but <laughs> never with this many students. Um, yes, my name is Michael Casadonte, and, and I, I've only been the Director of Digital Transformation at California State University, San Bernardino, for five years, but I've worked there for 25 years. Um, prior to that, I, I was a school teacher in the city of Detroit. And uh, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit more my, about myself, but uh, we use ChatGPT um, in, in our work because we built a chatbot for the university and I'll talk about what, what that is because that's what, uh, that's what ChatGPT really is, is a chatbot. And uh, we'll get into how people are using that today and how you might be able to use it yourself. Um, so this is what we're gonna cover today. Talk a little bit about myself, what ChatGPT is, what AI is, what artificial intelligence is. Um, how does ChatGPT work? How you can use it, how other people are using it, how people are misusing it, um, which is usually a better news story. Um, how we use it at, at California State University San Bernardino, and then a little bit about the future. So. I might ask some of you to, to participate. Um, so I, I don't know, this is, I'm, I was raising my hand backstage when he asked whether or not this is your first time here, because um, it is my first time here. But um, 
I might be looking for some ideas because in order to interact with ChatGPT, it's a conversational tool and you know, let's have a conversation with it because we're gonna actually use it here today. So uh, I came to Cal State San Bernardino from Detroit and I was the very first instructional designer and if you don't know what that is, you can ask ChatGPT because it's really good for that. Uh, explaining things that are maybe a little complicated. Um, I have a bachelor's degree from Wayne State University in the city of Detroit and a master's degree in instructional technology from Teachers College, uh, which is a part of Columbia University in New York City. Um, I've had many lives before then. I was a sous chef, I was a sign painter, I was a drummer, and I've actually gotten paid twice to read poetry, which is amazing. But not, not something you build a career out of. Okay, so let's get into it. Chat.gpt. Generative pre-trained transformer. It's actually a pretty terrible name. Uh, Google has, has an artificial intelligence tool and they just call it Bard. Um, that seemed nice just to name it something like that, but this is that's what GPT stands for. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but generative pre-trained transformer is more of a mouthful. So what is artificial intelligence? It's the intelligence of machines, which they don't really have. They, they only do what they're programmed to do by humans. Um, but artificial intelligence is where computers really veer off a little bit from doing exactly what they're told. Um, because they start exploring and doing other things that they've been programmed to do. Um, it's also artificial intelligence, also a field of study in computer science. And basically, it works off of large data sets like, oh, I don't know, the English language, the Spanish language, the French language, um, which uh, chat. GPT knows as well. In fact, that's probably its biggest asset is knowing the English language and the structure of grammar and how things are, are put um, because that is probably the biggest use of it by others. So wait, what is AI? Uh, <laughs> it's the technology that allows machines and computer applications to mimic human intelligence, mimic human intelligence. So it's been around since the 1950s where it was uh, used by the military where most things get its start. Um, just the idea of somebody sitting at a computer and saying, hello, how are, how are you? And then the computer saying back, I'm fine. And they tried to trick people into thinking they were talking to a person when they actually were talking to a machine. So it's come a long way from that. So what is learning from experience via iterative processing and algorithmic training. What does that mean? It's just, uh, it's just a way of saying it's seen so many iterations of something like um, the English language, uh, proper sentences, well-spelled words, and in many cases, uh, things like birds and cats and stairs and street lights and things like that. Uh, so I want to do a little survey here first. Raise your hand if you drive a Tesla. Okay. Now raise your hand if you have a smart speaker at home like an Alexa or a Google Home device. Okay, so everyone raising their hand uses artificial intelligence, got it. Um, the biggest part of what those tools use um, because they've been programmed to see things over and over again, solve problems and answer questions and things like that. But the biggest thing that your Alexa or your Google Home device uses, oh wait, I forgot another one. Uh, raise your hand if you have an Apple device and you use Siri. Awesome, so you also use so I, I have a Google phone, so I use Google Assistant, but that's pretty much the same thing. Siri, right, is, is really built off of this idea of NLP, natural language processing, and that's really what makes ChatGPT work so well now, is the ability to write something to it, because that's what you do, you 
right to it. Or if you turn on your microphone, I suppose you can speak into the microphone and have it detect what you say. Its ability to <coughs> drive computer programs to translate text from one language to another or respond to spoken commands or written commands. That's, that's what it's doing, and it, it does it very, very well. And I think that's what's changed, why you're sitting here today uh, at a lecture about chat GPT, you would not have been sitting here in 2018 because nobody really knew what it was. Um, so who made chat GPT? Well, in 2015, Elon Musk and, and Sam Altman got together with a bunch of other people and decided to make a tool that everyone could use just I mean, I'll say for the betterment of humanity, but that has yet to be seen. I guess humanity will decide that, um, not them. Elon Musk is, is not part of the board of, of ChatGPT or the company that made it, which is OpenAI, which is a private research uh, laboratory. Um, you may have heard that Microsoft owns it. Well. It, it doesn't really own it. it. It puts some money into it, and it wants its money back, <laughs> uh, as, as you would expect. And supposedly, what I read was once they get their money back, then they don't really have any, any um, financial monetary interest in the perpetuation of ChatGPT. Um, so it, it does, I think of it as standing alone, I suppose, uh, even though everybody seems to have a stake in this. So. That's uh, where it comes from. So how do I use it? How do, I, how do you interact with this thing? You just talk to it, like you're sitting across the table from one person who's really, really smart. Um, the more descriptive you are, the better it will be for you. If you're vague, it might be vague back. We'll talk about several examples of how you can be more descriptive with it. If you provide it context, that's better too. Uh, and give as many details as you can. I'm used to, if I give a presentation, usually I, I get feedback. I always want feedback, but I feel in this particular circumstance, it's not really built for that, so. But if you do wanna ask a question, raise your hand and shout it out and feel free, okay? Um, Ask it a question and provide a topic. It'll generate a response, okay, based on all of its knowledge. So what is its knowledge? How is it being used? So let's, let's stop right there. And this web address, which I think it should just be enough to say openai.com. I don't know if this is being recorded, right? Right, guys? Yeah. Excellent. So openai.com is where you need to go. There is also a mobile app, so you can look for it in your, your mobile app store. Um, I did notice uh, a knockoff of it, so I want to make sure that we look for that symbol up there. The, the logo it should be that logo when you find it in the, in the store, and you can install it on your mobile device and have it ready to go at any time. I have already logged in, but I do want to mention that, that it doesn't cost any money to use ChatGPT, okay? Um, and if you already have a Google account, it's pretty easy. You, you, you just tell it you have a Google account and then you uh, log in with that and you haven't created another account for it. You're just using one that you may already have. Um, so I'm already logged in, and on the left-hand side, I don't, you don't need to analyze that very closely, but they are past conversations that I've had with ChatGPT. Um, yeah, I asked it about Addison's disease to explain that to me. Um, so it's kind of hard to see, but right down here is where you type. It's hard to see here. It is a little bit difficult to see on the screen here. So I am prepared to ask it questions, 
to give it prompts, and I thought I would dive into that while you think about it, because what you're going to discover when you leave here is that there are limitations to ChatGPT, but they're mostly limited by your imagination. How do you want to use it? And I'm just going to show you how other people are using it, how we're using it, and give you some ideas how, about how you can use it. And that's what I've discovered when I talk to people. I talked to two people today who are using it, and one was using it because they write a lot of run-on sentences, and ChatGPT fixes that for them. And then other people are just write, trying to write something professional or something for a particular audience, and you can do anything with this, okay? When I asked it about Addison's disease, I said, gear it towards a 10-year-old. I'm not trying to insult 10-year-olds. I have a 9-year-old, okay? Um, but that's just what I asked it to do, and so that's what it tried to do. So let's see. I have... Where's my mouse? Yes. To gain information, potentially, yes. To have a conversation with, yes. Let's, let's take a look at some of the ways, if I can get my mouse back here. Where did my mouse go? There it is. Okay. Thank you. All right. Here I have some, some use cases, okay? So here is my use case. I wrote it out so we don't have to type it out and be all uh, bored with it, but I'll, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you, okay? I'm, write, I'm asking it to write a friendly letter, friendly but stern letter to the city of Redlands Department of Public Works, <sighs> requesting that they deliver a new recycling bin because uh, uh, mine is damaged. Uh, so my name is Doug Fister, and I live at 12345 Palm Canyon Way in Redlands. Uh, I have called and requested a bin twice already, once on, <clears throat> and I put specific dates, uh, two times, and both times I was told the bin would be delivered the following day. It's been six days and still no recycling bin. I created a very elaborate story that may not apply to you, but I want you to think about, this is just a letter writing example, okay? So I'm asking it to do that. I copied this text, but you could, you know, type it in. I'm pasting it in, okay? And now, here we go. Go, chat GPT. I'm not sure I want to read that. It's really long. No wonder the City of Public Works isn't delivering their trash bins. They've got all these letters that are so long to read. So what am I going to do here? I hope this letter finds you well. Remember I said friendly but stern? I'm looking for the stern part. I was assured that new recycling bin would be delivered to my address the following day. It has now been six days since my second request. You see how the detail really matters, right? So I gave it detail, six days, specific days that I called. I called twice. It's been this long. And it takes all of that and generates a well-written letter that can be copied and then you can modify it yourself to put, if you don't want to put your real name into it, then put your real name into it later. See, it already formulated the letter with my name at the top and, and it used my address because I gave it my address. It doesn't, it, 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 notice how it didn't come up with the public works department address in Redlands. Um, oh, but I'm just noticing now, I put in a bogus zip code and it put in the real zip code for reference, <laughs> which is where I live. That is interesting. I put in 92345, which I don't know where that is. Okay, so I think this letter's too long. It's how many paragraphs? One, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs. Um, you don't have to be polite. We write using only three paragraphs. Oh, there we go. 
It did it. It didn't do that fancy thing where, but um, so it consolidated into three paragraphs. There you go. It wrote a letter. Um, the way that other people are using it for this, but the, the other way that people are using it is they write a letter and then they copy and paste it into ChatGPT and they ask it to do something with it, right? Make it longer, make it friendlier, <coughs> make it more stern, um, whatever it is that they want to want to do. And it's, it's doing a very good job at that. Now, you notice up here at the top, it's kind of hard to read, but it says recycling bin delivery. So it named this inquiry that I performed and it put it up at the top. So <clears throat> if you want to do a new inquiry, you can just type up in the upper left hand corner, new chat, and it sort of clears it all out. And it, it is suggested that you do this to keep track of your conversations that you ask it. So I'm going to go back to this and uh, let's play a let's play a game because Chatbot is the, the Chat GPT is as actually good at uh, being a companion and in in as such it can play a game with you. So I was thinking movie trivia. Anybody want to shout out a decade maybe? The fifties. We got the fifties. Okay. So I'm just going to say let's. Play movie trivia um, about movies ah, from the 1950s. It says it would love to play that. <laughs> I'm going to enlarge this a bit. Okay. All right. I'm going to need your help. If it was the 60s, maybe. In which 1950 film did Betty Davis play the role of Margot Channing and H? I should have known that. I've seen that movie like six times. All about Eve. I didn't even say that number one question. Great job. So now it moves on to who directed the movie Rear Window. Did I, did I misspell it? So I was testing this out, and it asked me a question about who was in, in the leader of the Soviet Union when the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, and I wrote Gorbachev, but I got one letter wrong. And it said, sorry. <laughs> Not quite. It was Miguel Gorbachev. That's what it said. And so I wrote back and said, I think I get a point for that. I only left one one letter wrong and it's and it said you're right typos are a thing and you should get a point for that so <laughs> I want you all to know that I won an argument with chat GPT <laughs> so we could go on and on but y you get the idea it asked it came up with you can play 20 questions with it too I don't that might take a little bit longer but um, you can be thinking of an animal and say, I'd like to play 20 questions, I'm thinking of an animal. And it proceeded to ask me questions. And I proceeded to look up what the heck they meant. <laughs> because I wasn't quite sure what a marsupial was. Um, so just being honest here. Uh, but it really does do all of these things. Um, it can play games. What else? Dinner party planning. OK. So the point of. The point of these examples is not the, s the specifics of the example, okay? This is what I said. You have to walk out of here and use your imagination as to how you might use ChatGPT for your real world life, right? So <clears throat> the scenario I came up with is I'm having a dinner party with six people. They're all vegetarians. I want to have a five-course meal, soup, appetizer, salad, main course, dessert. Give me three suggestions of meals for each course, no recipes, I'll, you know, I'll look that up separately, okay? Even though I, I probably could. 
So I, I typed all that out. I, I summarized it for you, and I said, hey, do that for me in bullet form. Let me do a new chat. Now, I've already done this before, but I'm telling you that it will give us new recipes from the one that it gave me before. But let's see. I'll let you know. It's after lunch. You all ate lunch, right? I mean, I don't want to disturb anybody. Mixed greens with pomegranate, walnuts, and goat cheese. Is that the salad, obviously? Okay. Let me enlarge it again for you. Soup, roasted tomato. No, that was the same soup. Butternut squash and apple soup. Make up your mind. Is it have butternut or apple? Um, spinach and white. No, those were very close to the same soups it gave me before. I'll be honest. And it did suggest a caprese salad with heirloom tomatoes and fresh mozzarella. You get the idea. And then, these are just some ideas to get you started. You can mix and match these options to create a diverse and delicious five-course vegetarian meal for your dinner party. Now, what it didn't say, what it, it did say in mine was, enjoy your dinner party. <laughs> didn't say that this time. So, that's the thing. If, if you all do a Google search, right, with the exact same words, you're probably all going to get the same results in the same order. But with this, you don't always get the exact same answer. If you ask for, you know, I'm bored today. I'm looking for something to do this afternoon. Remember, more detail is better. It's 170 degrees outside. <laughs> right? Uh, I have to do this at five o'clock. I have these restrictions, whatever they might be, and it will attempt to come up with a suggestion. So elementary school teacher, you need to raise your hand. Yes. Can I put it onto a chip? No, no. There, there are large computers that have these. So the data sets, let's start with the data sets, right? Large amounts of information like how to write a proper sentence, like all the words in the English language, all the words in the French language. Um, obviously, a new uh, 1950s movie of trivia. I mean, you can go on and on about all the things that this thing has to know, and it has to be stored somewhere. And that's what this company has done, is stored this information somewhere. I wouldn't say on a chip. I would say on computers, probably called a server, that, that it has used, probably made copies of it somewhere. Y yes. Actually, this tool is, is very, I don't know if all of you heard, he said he was a researcher in the past. And this, this tool is definitely used in, in research uh, because of what the large amount of information that it knows, right? So it, it is very good at explaining complex things in simple language, but if it understands complex things that might be involved in research, uh, my, neighbor is, my neighbor is a marine biologist who's, the president of the International Sea Turtle Foundation. Um, and so I know nothing about that, but it would be good to ask questions about that. It is used in research. That is very much true to, to, uh, to crunch information and whatever the, the purpose of that research might be, it can do it very well. Yes? Like 
I'm just, okay, so she asked uh, whether or not um, it knows other things that she's searched for on her computer, and would it, uh, would, would that be influenced by the answers that it, that it gives? I will say probably not. I don't want to suggest that I know how all of those systems work, <laughs> right? I, I'm, I, I don't. But what OpenAI has said about ChatGPT is that it keeps track of the things that you asked it, right, in your account. In that sense, it says, it thinks, is a good thing because you can come back and ask it a question and it may already understand some things about you, like you're a vegetarian, you live in a community that's 170 degrees outside, whatever that may be, right? Um, I, I don't know how it would use it in, in it providing answers, but think of it as a companion, right? So you and I meet every Thursday and talk for an hour and we learn about each other. And a year later, you know, I, you ask a question and I think about all the things that I've learned about you in the year and I use that to, to help guide you, you know? Yeah, yes. How up to date is it? Thank you for asking that because I left that out. Um, I asked it about the, what's going on in Israel and Gaza, and it knew nothing about it. Um, but it's, it's honest. It said, I only have information up to September 2021. So now, remember I said I'm going to tell you what it doesn't do well, and it doesn't report the news very well. In fact, it told me, you probably shouldn't use me as a news source. Um, you should go somewhere else. And if you ask it medical information, right, it, it told me about Addison's disease and told me the symptoms of it and things like that. Um, but it, it'll, it'll say that you should talk to a physician. You know, it's not, it's not going to tell you what to do. It is not a doctor, and it will continually tell you that. And you can imagine all the scenarios where it might say, you know, I'm not this, you shouldn't use me as for that, right? Yes? So there is an updated version of chat GPT. So it says, says default GPT 3.5. There's also GPT 4.0 which I, I think is something you do have to pay for, and maybe that's the way it'll go. It'll be more advanced. So the next version of ChatGPT, or it, it already exists, it can read images, and it can create images, which some people might call art. Um, the reading of the images isn't really that far-fetched, if you think about it, because for those of you who drive a Tesla and or any kind of modern car that has cameras all around it, those cameras are and the car is programmed to detect things, right? Like stairs and street lights and bicycles and cats and all sorts of things, um, which is how we will ever get self-driving cars if we do. Yes? Can I share it without retyping it? Well. Yeah, so one thing that I learned in 1995 was copy and paste. <laughs> Is that funny? Okay. Um, so, control C. If you press control and then C, so I'm going to do it. Well, I did it before. Let's, let's do another translation. We'll do the translation thing. My, if I highlight it and I right-click with my mouse, it says copy, but you see, I don't know if you can read that, but it says Control-C. So keyboard, keyboard commands on there. I can do this. So now I've copied it. Where did it go? It's in what's called the clipboard. And we come over to chat GPT. I'm going to start a new conversation. This one is to show you the power of the language. I'm just stating a simple thing. I want to invite a friend over for dinner, um, and I want to invite them in Spanish, okay? Okay, this is different than what it gave me before. Vas a estir a mi cena. Are you going to attend my dinner? 
Um, mine said something a little bit different. So I'm going to show you this tool here. It says regenerate. You could translate that into try again. Ooh, now it's asking me if that was better or worse. Are you going to attend my dinner? Yeah, I don't know if it's better or worse. Um, but let's say I don't understand how to say it because I don't actually speak Spanish. Actually, I do speak Spanish. I'm just saying that to you. So now I'm copying that, and I'm saying phonetically. How do I say this? Paste. Sorry, I was getting a phone call. Um, so now this is how to, if you really are into this, saying this in Spanish and you don't speak it. Vas a sestir a mi cena. So if you receive something in Spanish um, it, it, and the computer or somebody said something, you, you could paste it in here or type it in there. Yes. I would say if you're concerned about that, then don't type in your address into this. Uh, again, the copy and paste. So if you have it, write a letter that's going to have your address. <laughs> copy it into something you do feel secure with, <laughs> maybe, and then type in your address. So I, I can't speak to how secure it is um, or how secure you should be with it. I can't really speak to that. Stick within your comfort zone. Am I going to finish it, you said? Yeah. Yes. Okay, hold on. Thank you for taking the question and answer part to heart. Um, I do want to make sure that I, I get through this, and we've gotten through a lot. This, this is the lecture, this uh, going through and testing these out and showing you examples of these is part of the lecture. Um, I'm just going to do one more. My grandchild is an instructional designer. What is that? Just to show you how you... Now, this is an example of, say, something that is complex. Maybe it's a matter of opinion. Whew. Now, I didn't tell it to gear that towards a 10-year-old, but you could if you wanted to. Um, but it does, it does those things very well uh, as well. Yes? Okay. You go to this web address, open AI. Dot com. Okay. So we made it through. Um, we made it through. Oh, when you said back to the presentation, you meant this. Um, misuse cases. Let's talk about that a little bit, okay? So I work at an institution of higher ed, and everybody are kind of freaked out about ChatGPT. Because what students could do is they could ask it to write a paper for them and turn it in as if they wrote it. I'm not saying they did, but they could. Because one of the things that ChatGPT does very well is write, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> if a student could put in a lot of details about what they wanted to write and parameters, right? I need a three-page paper. I need you to make three solid arguments, right? I need it, you know in this context, and then it, it could potentially do that. Um, I think a better way is to actually <laughs> write the paper yourself and then maybe run it through this for any grammatical errors that it may have to fine-tune your essay, but write it yourself. One moment, I will 
you have a question about plagiarism? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Probably, yes. So um, OpenAI has been sued by authors that uh, claim that their entire book is a reference, right? Remember I talk about data sets? Imagine all the books in this library being part of that data set. Every single word in every single book. That's a pretty large data set. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's called LLMs, Large Language Models. Um, and yes, the concern is, is that people will use this to take people's jobs away, to, re, you know, to re, <laughs> it was built as artificial intelligence, though they'll, they'll think that it replaces uh, real human intelligence. I suppose we have yet to see about that. And we have yet to see the result of any lawsuits that this company would <laughs> go through from these authors um, because there's been a lot of them, right? Um, there are anti-artificial intelligence plagiarism tools that universities could potentially use to um, try to detect a paper that was actually written by this. Um, I don't know how well those work, quite honestly. Um, I know that at my school, a lot of instructors are really thinking about how they assign things to students and what they've asked them to do and are thinking of maybe new things to assign them to do that this does not interfere with. In other words, really looking inside themselves and saying maybe we are asking students to do things that, um, that aren't challenging enough because if a computer can do it based on its algorithms and its, its data sets, maybe we should assign something else. Um, Generating malicious code, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it can create code that is used, uh, um, that can also run programs. And of course, um, people can always do bad things, right? Um, I see movies where people use a drill to get into a safe. Does that mean drills are bad? I don't think so. Um, but you need to think about this as a tool, I think, is, is one. It, it, it may be more than that, but it definitely is a tool, and it's a tool that people who plan to do bad things are using to do more bad things, uh, including uh, writing fake emails to try to get your money. Um, if you know anything about uh, phishing emails, that's what phishing emails are. They're emails that you might receive that say, hey, you know, I, it might say something that it thinks it knows about you, and it might ask you uh, for money. It might come from a friend. It might actually look like it comes from a friend. Um, some people are using this tool to help write those emails because if, if, if you're good at detecting them, you, you know that they're pretty poorly written uh, with misspelling and things like that. Well, a tool like this, that may, may be harder to detect. And then, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just sort of covering <laughs> the ground here, but if I have a large body of your own written work and I put it into ChatGPT and then say, write me a letter in the same voice and tone as, this, as all of the, the work that I gave you, it would probably do a very good job of writing an email that I've given boundaries to. Um, that's kind of scary because then it would impersonate a particular person, right? Is it the tool that's the problem or is it human behavior? I don't know, I'm not a, that's a different field than the one I'm in. Um, and let me tell you how we use it at California State University, San Bernardino. Um, we have, uh, think about these large data sets. Our data sets are not so large in comparison to, <laughs> to others, but we have a directory of people. Um, it's all the faculty and staff, so it's, it's about uh, 3,000 people in it. And uh, we, we point our, our chatbot, which is a conversational tool made just for students 
faculty, staff, and potential visitors and prospective students and donors to our university um, that they can use to ask questions about the university. So those are the boundaries, really, is just about the university. Um, and the people directory is one of those things. So the department directory, all the departments on campus, the information about them, where are they located, where are their hours, what do they do, who works there. Uh, important dates in, in our calendar. We have a whole calendar full of a lot of important dates like every university has, and we have that in a database that we point our chatbot to. Um, the class schedule, dining on campus, things like that. So the way uh, the team <coughs> that I work with is using this is they, they know the answers, right? Chat GPT doesn't actually know any of these answers. It doesn't have that in its data set. At least I don't think so. <laughs> and so if you ask uh, our chat bot, um, does anyone named Antonio work at the university? Something like that. Um, it may come back and say, uh, there are two people named Antonio work here. One is a groundskeeper and the other is a math professor in the math department. And there's one other person who works here named Tony which could be short for Antonio, but I'm not sure. Um, that is the answer that we got, that the programmers got when they took the answers to who, uh, Antonio's who work there and then fed it to ChatGPT and said, package this up in a nicely written way for the person who's asking the question. And it did it all that in just a few seconds. Um, so that's how we're using it. We're using our data and our information and then passing it through ChatGPT to wrap it up in a nice way to make it sound very conversational, right? Do you offer any, you know, what nursing programs do you have? I'd like to get a certificate to teach high school, right? And we use our actual data and chat GPT together to then provide a nicely written, nicely worded, correct sentence in return. So we're still testing that out <laughs> on the back end, but we see this as a positive thing because it helps us in our job. But we use it for this one, we feel like it's, a, it's sort of a tiny thing as opposed to the rest of the world that's thinking about how they can use it. Yes, sir. It can search. It can search the web, and probably does search the web. Um, we, we've we've actually pointed it at our website and said, "Only stay within our website for answers. Don't go crazy, right?" Um, so yes, it, it probably does utilize all the trillions of web pages out there for information. I have no idea how it discerns what's valuable and what's fake. So the other caveat is, Chatbot GPT might be wrong in what it's providing you. Just like if I sat across the table from somebody, they might be wrong. <laughs> it's a conversational tool, so take it with a grain of salt, right? Well, I guess we, if we ask it movie trivia questions, we better stick within decades, you know. Um, I don't... I, I think that's for, for us to answer, right? How to, I mean, it's really good to know that, right? It's really good to know that it's only up to date from 20, 2021 in September. Um, I'm sure soon we'll hear that it's got another update, but what does that mean? How does that change how we search? Um, again, if you're not using it as a news source, which you probably shouldn't, um, then it doesn't matter. You, you have your news sources you have, have your sources for current data. And ChatGPT is not going to lie to you. It's, it's going to, I mean, it's not going to knowingly lie to you. It might provide you with, with information that isn't correct, that it thinks it is. But you can always ask it, right? <laughs> you can ask it how reliable it is.
I mean, Yeah. Yeah, well, good for you for asking for references. Um, bad for it for making those references up, it seemed like. But, I mean, it, it thought they were, it, they were legitimate. So the, the trust level, just like a person, goes way down when chat GPT delivers. I'm, I'm not here to advocate for chat GPT. I'm, I'm here to share what I know about it, my experiences with it, and the experiences of the people that I've known. But it, it is definitely clear, and I never expected you to walk away going, my world has completely changed because I know <laughs> ChatGPT exists, and now I'll never be alone, and I can always play games with it and all of that. No, not at all. We are all still absorbing this thing, just like we absorb electric cars and are still absorbing this idea of self-driving cars. Really? Um, right? We're not, yeah. My son is nine. He doesn't like the idea of self-driving cars. I didn't quite catch all of that. Something about a paper being submitted? So can you use it as a tool to determine plagiarism? I don't know. Uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, it, you, you would, so OpenAI says that whatever it generates, it has no copyright claim to. So they're saying, if I generate something for you and you use it and you publish it, it will not challenge you and say, wait a minute, I wrote that. Um, that's not the same as, as what you're saying, right? But I just wanted to put that out there. Yes. It's... It, it's created a lot of issues, right? Ac accusations of plagiarism and this creating it when it wasn't actually true. I want to apologize to the, the guys in the back who I didn't say I was going to ask a bunch of questions and that you were going to talk because they're thinking we could have set up a microphone and they could have walked up. And so now the video probably won't be able to hear all of your questions, which is... Well, I'm trying my best to repeat it. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I think people is still the answer. <laughs> uh, Right? Because when I talked about how this is not being used, you know, it's being misused in a way. Um, it really starts with the person who plans on doing bad things and using this tool to help them do it. Right? Um, but I will give another answer to that as well. Um, students who are going to our university, planning their career, planning their life out, um, in, in this day and age, if you're somewhere, if your job is somewhere between the consumer and the data that their consumer is trying to get at, and you work in between there as a facilitator to try to get that data delivered to that person, you may not have a job for very long because tools like this will do it a lot faster 24-7 than a human being will do. Now, don't ask me for a list of jobs that are going to be lost as a result of that, but that's the way I'm going to put it to you, is people who are going to have a career where they're facilitating the acquisition of data may be out of a job because 
they're in between, <laughs> they're in between and may be replaced by, by machines and technology that do it. And maybe, they're, maybe they should seek a job in helping build those machines and that technology that is going to do that work. Yes, sir. I didn't hear the first part, something about chat TPT evaluating your writing. Well, you will have to type, I mean, to be fair, you will have to type up your writing um, so that it can be copied and pasted into that field down there. And then you need to prompt it with something. You gotta tell it what you want it to do with your writing, to correct your grammar, to make it shorter, to synopsize it. You can tell it to write things in you know, a bullet list as opposed to something else, but you have to have a prompt and the more detail you give, the better it is at, at doing that. But you can pump in as much of your writing as you want, it seems, and it will chew on that and return an answer for you. Yeah. Is this how we're gonna close it out? I don't know, does someone just come up here and tackle me? <laughs> okay. Yes. Wow. Well, that just ruined Where's Waldo for everybody. <laughs> I mean, how many other things are ruined by this? Yes, ma'am. Right. Maybe the critical, you're, you're exactly right. Maybe the critical thinking is how to use a tool like this, right? And then that change kind of flips this, the script. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not to mention that you can press regenerate. It's essentially try again or do it over. Give me a different answer, whatever the result is. Yes. Yeah. All right, with that, I think we're going to say thank you so much for all the information. And uh, if you have any further questions, maybe uh, get in contact with our speaker today. I'm but take a we'll hope to see you next week.